and interpret that output. Now, what we can do to kind of get the opposite point of view, um, so now we've looked at really kind of focused on women. Now you can do the math and just um, do the inverse. So you can say, um, here you can say 1 divided by this, and that will get you the same basic um, thing that I'm going to show you now. But you can also just run back into your statistics model and click back in here and it'll pull back up all of the data. As long as you haven't closed the whole program, it will pull up the same uh, data that you just used. And you can go back into the predictors, and here we can go back and into options and say for gender, we want to now use the opposite order, so we want to use ascending. So now we will really be able to speak to the relationship um, between men and drinking um, at this point when we reverse that. Okay, so we can click OK there. And now it's going to give us, you'll notice, the same, really the same analysis as before. Nothing has really changed. Still significant model. The effects are still the same. And the model is really predominantly still the same. But the difference here, as you can see, is now the gender coded zero is on the top, and that it refers to men. And you can see here that the instead of being below 1, now this exponentiated coefficient is above 1. Now this would imply that men drink at rates 44% higher than women um, for this particular variable in terms of peak drinks. And um, our global um, attitudes statistic is going to be about the same. So for each one point increase in attitudes, um, drinking rates increase by about 26 percent. And now we have the interaction and now this is men by attitudes basically is how you can interpret this. Again it's not a significant coefficient but just so you get an idea of how to interpret something like this. This is implying that for each one point increase in global attitudes for men they increase their drinking at a rate of 3 percent. So that's just focusing on sort of the male side of that model. So that's how you interpret the output for Poisson. Um, if you remember, we also um, have data that we have saved in our data file at this point. And we have that data right here of our mean predicted response and our standard deviance residual, or standardized deviance residual. And what we want to do is we now want to graph this against this to just kind of be sure and check that our residuals um, don't look too off base. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do a scatter plot. Simple scatter is fine. And on our x-axis we are going to put our predicted value of the mean response. Oops. And on the y-axis, we're going to go ahead and put our standardized deviance residual. Okay. And we can go ahead and look at that. Okay. So what we really want to be looking for here is um, kind of a cloud of data, which would indicate to us that we don't have um, any data that is, you know, at one end that it's going to be more prone to uh, deviation from the responses that we received um, versus on the other end. Now what you can see is there's a slight tendency for this cloud to kind of pile up over at lower re responses for the response variable. So for people who are drinking less, we tend to have a wider range of uh, residuals. And then for people who are drinking more, they tend to kind of be on the lower side so that the the residual is negative. Um, and they tend to be a little bit narrower in their band. So this kind of should give us pause also because we really want to have uh, residuals that are between negative 3.3 and positive 3.3. And the reason why is we really want them centered around zero. You really don't want your model to be predicting outcomes way far away from the actual outcome values. You really want your model to be predicting right on target. So if it's 
predicting outside between um, of of the range between um, positive 3.3 and negative 3.3, what you can imagine is that the residuals are getting a little bit too far, so that the model is not exactly predicting the responses um, in the way we would hope it would. So the fit might not be fantastic. So this means we might want to go back to the drawing board and just see if we can't improve the model fit. Now keep in mind we have the information criteria also to think about.